Super Jackpot! Hey, what's going on? Welcome to Brody Even Talk Pinball. I'm Nick Lane. Kevin Manny. It's uh, Monday, July 25th. We're back from JJP, Jersey Jack Pinball's factory. Oh, man. We're going to talk about that. Uh, show a little patience, guys. Just settle down. <laughs> it was really uh, great. But, well, you know, if you watch, you get to pretty much live it all with us. So. I know. That's cool. Yeah. You get to experience it's kinda it. kind of like you were there. It's also online, too. I mean, you can go to our YouTube channel, which if you don't know already, I don't know why you wouldn't. Uh, our YouTube channel is Buffalo Pinball. Just search that in YouTube, and you can watch uh, the battle we did, the interview we did. Also, What's up? It's also down there. At the it's down the there. Oh, right there. Magic. If you're watching. The interview we did with Jack, um, there is a, a... I don't... We'll talk about it. We'll yeah, talk we about will. it. We, I get ahead uh, of myself because I'm it, really I'm hyped exciting. up from it. Yeah, it was, it was a really good time. Um, but we got something special for you guys for this episode, and we've... That is an interview with Adam Gasick from Domino's, and we're going to talk about the new upcoming Domino's pinball machine from Spooky Pinball and Domino's. So let's let's bring him in here. All right. So let's this is a bro. Do you even talk pinball first? We have our first uh, live and in person guest. So welcome aboard. Wow, first. Yes. Thanks, guys. Yeah, technology. Look at that. So if it, if it's uh, a big flop and the internet breaks, well, you know we tried. <laughs> uh, I think we're doing good so far. So welcome. Thanks for joining us, Adam. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Cool. So um, I'm I'm eager to talk about the Domino's pinball machine. Um, but can you just tell everybody just a little bit about yourself in terms of what's your relationship with with pinball? How did you get into pinball? Where does where does what's the genesis of all of this? Yeah, I'll do the, the quick 10 second version. Uh, I built a well, I didn't build. I was thinking about building a main machine about two years ago. Ended up bailing on that and just bought one, like I think a lot of people did, overpaid. Um, got that and put it in the basement and realized I needed something else to go with it and uh, found a pinball machine on Craigslist. It was a Star Wars, e Star Wars, and uh, I'm a big Star Wars fan, so bought it and it has been downhill ever since. So <laughs> I, I don't consider that downhill though. Yeah, well, yeah, uphill, downhill. Yeah. It's been a, a rolling thing into addiction. Uh, like you guys are the same way, I think. Uh, I now have eight machines. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Sounds awesome. very familiar. Yeah. So uh, run, run us through the uh, the collection. What's in your What's in your lineup? So uh, I'll actually go in order if I can. Uh, Day to Star Wars. I bought Day to Back to the Future. Mistake, but whatever. <laughs> okay. The theme is great, though, right? Yeah, the theme is great. Um, then I actually went. Uh, I got America's Most Haunted. Um, a Lord of the Rings. I got a Stern Big Game, an Iron Man Vault, and a Ghostbusters. Is that a, right? Oh, and a No Fear. Sorry. Oh, no there fear. you go. That's a great variety of uh, games. There are a bunch of different manufacturers, a bunch of different eras. Yeah, so I was going to say that's well rounded. I yeah. like that. That's what I'm trying to do. I mean, some of it was just trying to grab anything, like I think everybody does in the beginning. I mean, you just see anything that's for sale. And then, uh, then I just decided to kind of go different and try to get something from, you know, I got one from Spooky. Where I never even played the game. I actually watched your stream. It was one of the, one of the things that uh, convinced me to buy it. So, thanks. Hey, <laughs> we're part of the, part of the, uh, the addiction, right? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So, um, does that mean that this was in the last couple of years? Does that mean that you were new to pinball in the sense or did you grow up playing pinball? No, I grew up a video game guy. I actually shied away from pinball just because I didn't know. I didn't. I didn't know how to play. It would take two seconds, um, and I'd be out. So, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's really brand new the last two years. Awesome. So, what do you think? It was, was there some? Was there a moment when you you like realized that it was uh, it was kind of like video games, or that there was more than trying to keep the ball from from entering the drain, which is impossible, right? Yeah, I, sorry, I'm going to drop another name, but uh, so <laughs> I went to the VFW 
tournament. So Clay Harrell's place, it's about 15 miles north from here. And uh, actually, Nate Shivers was there, so Coast to Coast, shout out to Nate. And he had mentioned that we were down to sponsoring it. So I sidled up to him and I was just talking to him. He's like, hey, do you want to play after the tournament's over, after I got knocked out? So we walked over and played. And he was, he explained to me how to switch lanes in Metallica and Lord of the Rings. I had no idea. Like, I owned two machines, had no idea. Just completely clueless. And we played for about, I don't know, three hours. And he just kind of explained rules and depth. And, I mean, we played, I mean, as you know, Clay's got 300 games. So we played 50. And uh, that really got me hooked. And I was like, wow, this, there are tons of old strategies and rules and, and depth to these games that I, didn't, I thought I was just flipping around. So, yeah. You mentioned that like Domino's was the sponsor. Were you the um, person who made that happen? Like, because I remember that that classic tournament was sponsored by Domino's, and everybody's like, "This is cool," because this is like the first time we had seen a corporate sponsor of a, a pinball tournament like that, at least that I know of. Yeah, yeah, it was me. We actually had a board meeting in I think it was in February, and uh, somebody got a little bit of chewed out, a little little uh, smack in the butt for not donating enough. So, uh, for our charitable contributions. So, it was in the back of my head as I was thinking about it play. And so, I, you know, play and said, hey, can we sponsor it? And he said, of course. And so, uh, I kind of hooked it up and we sponsored it again this year. So, yeah, it was, I guess it was me. Awesome. So, so yeah. how did you guys make the next step into like, okay, we sponsored a pinball tournament. Now, let's have a Domino's pinball machine. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, it was a, so it was probably five months later when the idea kind of started. My boss, who had come to a couple, we ran some tournaments at Pinball Peaks, which is in Ann Arbor, um, with about 15 to 20 people. And my boss said, You should make a game. You know, you should get somebody to make a Domino's game. He has no idea. Like, he doesn't know that there are only two or three manufacturers. He just thinks, Yeah, they get made everywhere. Um, so, I started thinking about it. We did a little bit of polling internally and they, some people said, yeah, you know, it's a possibility. We can do it. And we drove to uh, myself and one other pinhead at Domino's, this guy Dan McNamara, drove to Chicago at X for Expo 15 and just really just accosted Charlie at the Pinball Life Explosion. He was running around. I emailed him before and said, hey, would you mind, would you mind talking? And he said, fine, but, you know, he thought we were just a bunch of, you know, kooks. And uh, we, we grabbed him for two seconds, talked about it. He gave us some rough numbers. We, he said, how many we need to get? We came back, had a little meeting with some upper-level management, and they said, go for it. Um, as long as you donate some of the, the, you know, the Partners Foundation, figure out where to donate. And so uh, we put an email together. We got 75, you know, pre-orders in a week. Were the, was that mostly from people internal within Domino's, or was that open to anybody at that point? So it was, uh, yeah, at that Should point it was like internal only. Like um, I don't think he's getting it. Oh, sorry, I guess. Am I it's okay. No, 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 you're good. Uh, um, yeah, it was internal. The email went out internally, and then a franchisee is also a pinhead, and he put it on a pin side. And, um, a guy, Andy, in Wisconsin. So, uh, I didn't expect it to leak out. I, I actually I was in Toronto uh, at a litigation. I was like sitting in the middle of the mediation, and my my phone just starts blowing up, and I was like, "I don't know what's going on." So I checked it out, and uh, Dan had told me, "Hey, pin site's blowing up. It looks like somebody posted your email, the internal email." And we didn't really care. I just didn't think anyone would show that much interest in it, especially that early without seeing anything. Um, so we opened it up. We got about five. I think we had four or five external orders right away, but mostly internal. You know, the vast majority was internal. It was at that point, nobody had seen anything. It was just like, here's a new pinball machine. Everybody threw their money at it kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, there was nothing. We didn't have an artist. We didn't have, we didn't have anything. We didn't have a layout, except for the layout that I sent you guys that we kind of drew. You know, we had an idea of it. Um, but yeah, we had nothing besides the thought. So why don't I pull that up and we can we can show people what you're talking about? I got a question. Did that um when you started getting those those orders internally come in? Did that surprise everybody that that meet your expectation exceed it? Uh, it actually exceeded it. I thought we were going to have to show at least art to get up to the number that that Charlie wanted. Um, in order to make it happen, I thought we were going to have to at least show you know back glass 
uh, maybe not play field. This is going to take a long time, but I thought back last if we threw something together, maybe people would think, wow, this is, this is really happening. This isn't, you know, just a toy retheme. Um, but yeah, we had 75 or maybe even 80. I, I can't remember now, but really quickly. So the minute we hit that, you know, it was actually less than that was Charlie's minimum, but that sealed it. We, uh, signed an agreement and, uh, went, went forward with it. Yeah. So you shared this image with us of the, uh, of this, uh, play field sketch who did this and kind of give the story of, of what this is. Yeah, this is, this is embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> this was me, um, with the biggest piece of paper I could find in the legal department, uh, at Domino's. And it's obviously not to scale as Charlie says a couple has said a couple times, this would be, I think it's 15 shots or 16 shots. Um, it'd be, you know, 30 inches wide or something or 45 inches wide. I don't know what he said. He was, he was very upset with me when I sent it. Um, but we just thought what we did is we took, um, we took, you know, elements and, and things that we found enjoyable in the games that we played and, and tried to put it together in, uh, in something we thought would be within the budget and, uh, and still would be enjoyable and fit the theme. Cause I mean, it's partially the, the domino stores are fast and, and hectic. So we wanted a game that, that was going to be the same way. Yeah. So that's the, that's your rough sketch. And then I turned into, uh, I turned into what we're going to see here next right there. That's, that's the finished play field, correct? Yep. That's the finished play field. Um, the, the biggest differences is there, there are no, um, pass through lanes in the middle. Those are not, you know, the two ramps kind of in the, in the middle and the, and to the right. Um, and there's no sort of the war machine kicker. You guys know, you guys are familiar with the war machine kicker. Oh, yeah. We, we had one of those in the way, way back. Um, as, so, as you know, one of the hardest shots, probably where the five is on the top of the rollover lane, you're going to have it back there. And that got removed. Um, and oh, I guess in the spinning pizza inserts got removed as well. That was a, something we just threw in there as an idea. Cool. So let's, uh, we've got some, let's, uh, take it back to the beginning here. So that's the, uh, this is the, uh, Domino's spectacular pinball adventure logo. Who did, who did the logo for you guys? So we, I don't know if you guys remember, but we ran a contest on Pinside, which, um, caused a little bit of, uh, <laughs> controversy. As um, things on Pinside tend to do. Yes. No way. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was, it was all my idea. Um, I ran it by Charlie and he said, yeah, you, you wouldn't believe the amount of unsolicited art I get. He goes, throw it up there let people, you know, send you stuff and give them some, some gift cards and we'll, you know, everybody will be happy. It did not go over that well. Um, but the, we, you know, we got, I think we had eight submissions, 10 submissions, but, uh, a guy, Blake Dumasnow, uh, who works at NASA in Houston, he's a graphic designer there, just took to this project. And I think he submitted, you know, six different things, including what turned out to be the, the, uh, title treatment that you have on the screen right there. That's great. And did he do the, uh, the cabinet artwork here too? He did. He did. It's hard to see here, but, um, where the uh, the interior is brick, so on the side cabinet, so it's set off. There's cardboard around the outside. It's like corrugated cardboard. And on the inside, where the title treatment is, is actually blue brick, so oh, cool. exposed brick. That's cool. The cabinet and outside of the game looks great. Um, this is the lower part of the play field. This is the part that Nick had such a reaction to on the last episode when, yeah, he, saw ahead, the, when he saw the jacked up pizza guy. So what's the story behind <laughs> the jacked up pizza guy? So we had a, uh, we had a chubby, uh, stereotypical pizza maker in there, uh, in, I think the first round of sketches, I think that's what it was, the second round of sketches. Uh, but it just didn't look right. And that's not really who our franchisees are. And that's not really what pinball is to me. You know, pinball is more of a superhero, sort of the same as video game adventure. So we made the guy, I told, I, uh, Asked the artist to make them, you know, more superhero and this is where we ended up, um, which I love. Uh, I think it's gotten, some people got, you know, had some critique of it, but I, I think overall it's, uh, it, I, I love it. And I think overall everyone's kind of given it a thumbs up. Totally. I think, I think it looks great. Yeah. He is jacked up. Um, he, he but, stays fit and he's not afraid to uh, eat pizza. You know, he's yeah, got the best yeah. of both worlds. <laughs> Which way to the delivery, ladies? You know, he's, he's, 
He had a. Uh, He's carrying eight pizzas there. I'm just saying that's is. that's pretty good. That's pretty solid. He had a little bit more of a. Uh, uh, I don't know how, but I don't know what the right word is. More of a seductive grin Oops. in right, one of the you. first um, drawings. I don't think I sent that to you guys, but oh it, no, I, no, we didn't see that one. His eyebrow was cocked up. You know, it was I can't do it, so I have to hold my finger up. But it was, <laughs> it was, it was much more suggestive, or it looked suggestive to some people. So uh, we he's, he's a little, a little too bit. sensual. We're not ready. We're <laughs> not ready for that for a male figure to be that sensual on a pinball machine just yet. Yeah, and you know, I mean, you guys know that the the rumors of pizza delivery guys and and what they get as a tip, you know. So we didn't want that. <laughs> we didn't want that to seem like we were trying to make that. Or the things you have to consider when you're a, a, a big pizza company. I wouldn't think uh, of those things, you know. It was. Uh, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to get that through marketing. So uh, one of the big things when you guys announced this game was that it was is the Noid going to be in it, and he is in it. You can kind of see him here on in the back glass or in the back towards the. Uh, towards the back of the machine. So tell me about like, like I know the Noid isn't uh, something you guys use in your current marketing. Like how did you bring him back? Was, what was the consensus to bringing him back into the game? Um, so we have done, I think, you know, since 19, I think it was 91 when, when the Noid left or 92, maybe it was even a little later than that. Uh, every once in a while he comes out, he was in a Facebook game, I believe. Uh, a couple years ago and he'll make an appearance online or in t-shirts for us, but no national, you're right. No national advertising, except he's actually in the newest uh, commercials, which I don't even know if anyone's seen yet. And they may be going out this week. Um, sorry to spoil that marketing department, but he'll, he'll be, uh, <laughs> you're getting all the spoilers not, on the show here today, point, but it's, it's, it's a call out to the noise. Um, <laughs> you'll see it. So we, we asked marketing if we could include them, uh, include him both on the back class, uh, the play field and, and on the, as a toy. And they said, yeah, totally fine. Um, the only thing they said is we couldn't use the old logo on the play field. Uh, we were allowed to use it on the back glass, but uh, on the cabinet and on the play field, we weren't allowed to use the old logo, just the new tile logo. Oh, so Star Hedgehog in the chat says he remembers the Noid from the... Uh from the Nintendo game and look what I have right here. Boom. Boom. Yo Noid. I'm doing wow. my research. I'm, I'm bringing, I, I haven't played this probably since I was about nine years old, but, uh, it was time I, I went to eBay and grabbed myself a copy of Yo Noid so I can, uh, I forgot it was a Capcom game and Capcom made great games on that. NES, so I'm really looking forward to playing that. I remember playing that game too. Yeah. I have memories. Yeah. A lot of people remember that game. So, uh, let's, well, let's go through a few more of these, uh, these photos that you sent us because there's some great exclusive stuff that people ha really haven't seen before. Uh, so this is a, a rough sketch of the, uh, of the backlash. Who did the uh, artwork for the backlash here? Uh, Scott Gullix. He's right. Pinball. He developed the wrath of Olympus game from scratch. Really? I think by himself with his coder a couple of years ago, uh, was really close to getting enough pre-orders and, uh, then, the the predator and, uh, other stuff went down, the J-pop stuff went down, and I think he, he's, I don't know if he's still shopping it, but, so he, he I contacted him, we were going to do internal artwork first, and uh, the artist got really busy with the rally stuff, and so Charlie recommended, Charlie Emery recommended Scott, and talked on the phone with Scott, really, it's, a, it's amazing, I was going to tell you guys this, uh, the amount of phone calls I've had with Charlie and Scott, I can count on one hand. Uh, it's all by email. So I talked to Scott once, gave him some ideas. We went back emails back and forth. He, there's one, one sketch before this. And then this was like, I think this was the second sketch that he delivered, which is so close to the, it's really close to the, uh, to the final one. Right. Which we, we have right here. So if you, there's the final sketch, if you go back to the, the previous one, it's like, it's almost dead on. To I'm going to interject here because I'm, this is for Taylor of this flipping podcast. The original sketch shows motion in the car. It does. The real one doesn't. Look at all that motion on the wheel there. I just want to settle. Uh, hey, I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to circle the. Uh, no, you can see the motion. The track. There's the motion there. right there. Yeah. Bam. Look at that. That's right. <laughs> Look it, at all that motion. The scandal. It, I actually, uh, you know what? I agree with Taylor, and I wish I could circle too because you see where the the heat wave. You see where the heat wave um, from, the, from the pizza logo is in the front. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. There was actually the the original drawing. 
was a an open pizza box with large with a huge slice of pizza in the front so right in that area yeah it, it looked like it was falling out of the pizza box to the front and it did add and actually i think there was another slice falling to the back sort of back by the the road and it added a lot but um again the corporate we can't have our food falling on the ground. It, just, uh, it didn't make it through. It didn't make it through the marketing department. I tried, but it didn't work. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. So we 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 looked at the play field. Uh, so these are the modes and objectives of the game. So when you're coming up with a, a new pinball machine, uh, Domino's has never done a pinball machine, as far as I know. Um, how, how do you start like thinking about modes and and what would go into a pinball machine about pizza? Yeah. Uh, well, it was. Uh, this was uh, just me sitting down at my desk when I should have been working and um, spending a couple hours thinking about what I enjoy in pinball and what would match uh, the domino stores. So we knew we were going to have to have the Noid and, and some, you know, avoid the Noid, battle the Noid modes. That was a no brainer. That was easy. And then uh, we, we talked about, um, making it a little bit like, you know, starting, it's sort of like a Mike Tyson's punch out, starting as the lowest rung and, and building your way up. So starting as a delivery driver, pizza maker, and, you know, working your way up to, to dominate, you know, the whole pizza world or, or the, or the, uh, I think the last one is called pizza wars is the, uh, the final wizard mode, which is defeating our other comp- competitors and, you know, ruling the pizza universe. So that's really what, I wanted to keep store operations in there. I wanted it to kind of be a career thing for the internal people. So there's a driver mode, a franchisee mode, um, a manager mode, and a, a gold franny, which is you know sort of a, I don't know, it's the Oscars of dominoes. So the franchisees who are really good, they win these gold franny awards. And that's, that's really what I did. I just sketched it out. Um, I actually think that Charlie thought I was going to have, you know, four modes and uh, one multi-ball and... I delivered this to him and he didn't say a word. He just said, great, we'll do it. And I got a coder now, David Fawcett. He's great, we'll, we'll do it. And so he, he's been agreeable. He hasn't trimmed down anything on the, on the, on the uh, modes or, or goals or objectives. Awesome. Yeah. So what is this? Is this just like a promo piece? Yeah, that went, actually it went on the, uh, when he took it to TPF, it went on the, on the play field glass just to block it. Oh, that's right. I saw it because they didn't actually have a play field in it at that point, right? Yeah. And that's, that's another, that's another Blake. Blake did that in like a day and a half. Amazing. It's beautiful. Uh, someone needs to hire him. Some pinball. <laughs> I don't know if he's hireable because NASA is probably pretty good, but someone should try to steal him. He's yeah. amazing. That's really well done. So here's some of the, the modes. These are the apron cards, right? Yeah. So that's another, this is more Blake. And you can see the, the corrugated cardboard maybe in the background. It might be tough. Uh, on a on a faraway screen, but it's the same as the uh, as the blue of the outside in the cabinet, where it it, it just looks a little wavy, um, which I think is a pretty cool thing. Yeah, it's also it looks like a pizza box. Yep, exactly. Um, and so this is just the, these are the operations. So this is the the left side is the three modes that are store modes. You have more pizza. modes in this game than Big Buck Hunter has. I mean, I, I don't know if that's high praise, but I think I got to get rid of my game. <laughs> this is <laughs> time to get a domino. You were doing this at your desk and you're like, let's do three modes and it took them a year and they can't even have more than, uh, more than one. Continue. I'm sorry. I get, I get upset with the big buck hunter. You got me going. <laughs> well, thanks for, by the way, thanks for putting the uh, tutorial on because I think, isn't it in the Pinberg lineup and I've never seen it. So I at least watched you guys play it. Yeah. Yeah. It'll, it'll be in there kicking everybody's ass as usual. Yeah, no doubt. So this is the so these are the final ones. Um, the three on the left are, and then there's a mini wizard. So there's just a multi ball, and then the three on the right are the last three wizard modes. So this is world's fastest pizza makers like destroy the ring. Um, you just you make three pizzas and you set a time, and there'll be a separate high score for that. <clears throat> and then the last two I'll never make it to unless I take the glass off. But <laughs> one is. One is one will have uh, different countries that you have to you have to. Uh, we're a worldwide country or a worldwide company with I think we're in eighty four countries right now, eighty five maybe. Um, so we wanted to give a shout out to the international uh, department. So we made this. There'll be you know a Canada one, an India one. We're human. We have a thousand stores in India. I don't think anyone would know that. Australia, uh, Japan, and probably the UK. 
And then the final one will be a uh, battle against our two national competitors, three national competitors. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> they won't be, they won't be named, but, uh, it will be obvious who you're, who you're battling. I think we can all fill in the blanks. Exactly. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to push it as far as I can, but I uh, can't, can't go too far. That's awesome. That's perfect. So these are, uh, so what are these here? These are more modes or what's going on? Yep. So this would be, um, so on the top is the own the dream mode. So those that's uh, actually you qualify them in the pops. So you hit it up in the pops. Uh, you get a certain amount of hits, and then and then you can start each mode. So it's driver, manager, franchisee, gold franny. Gold franny would be another mini wizard. And then there's the noid modes. Um, the standard multi balls handle the rush. That's you spell oven to light the locks, and then you hit the uh, the oven to to lock balls. And you'll be able to hit that as many times as you want. It will progress from, you know, you lock two to start it, then three, then four, then five. Uh, I think it stops at five, if I if I recall my rules correctly. Cool. There's a yeah. lot in this game. So, um, we, we Adam, uh, Adam, Adam's got an announcement regarding uh, Buffalo Pinball and the Bros and Dominoes. What oh, would that be, Adam? I thought you guys were going to do it. Uh, we'll let you do the honors. All right. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna have uh, the Buffalo Pinball and Bro Crew come out to Ann Arbor, Michigan, in uh, in August, and uh, do the stream to kick off the Domino's machine. We're gonna make some pizzas. We're gonna stream the game from our World Resource Center. Uh, we're gonna eat some pizza, awesome. and uh, we'll we'll see what happens. But tentatively scheduled for August the twentieth, which is Saturday. Uh, time to be determined, but. Uh, early evening right guys i think that's probably it sounds it. good yeah, yeah. we'll uh we'll let everybody know for sure and uh dominoes is going to help spread the word so uh we're really looking forward to that i'm basically just going for the pizza but you know playing the pinball would be good too we did we yeah, have a special yeah. request for martha she wants to know what was it the the cinnamon sticks or something she wanted to see she made to know something about cinnamon sticks yeah we can make those that's easy I, actually i can even make those okay like that's simple all it's right just that was ball. easy <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good good job remembering that, See, Martha. You're well, make her day. You know, all the way home from uh, Jersey Jack, she kept talking about Domino's and cinnamon sticks. So. Yeah, we were talking about the Domino's pizza that we want to eat, and uh, she interjected with cinnamon sticks. She so. wanted to know if there was going to be a demo on how to make that. So cool. Yeah, we'll have it. We'll, we have like probably probably the best pizza trainer in the U.S. I mean, at least from a corporate perspective, he's going to come in and, make, and show us make some pizzas because I can't do it. So he'll come in and uh, awesome. he'll show us how to make some pizzas. We can, hopefully we can get some video of that too, because it'll be right downstairs. That's super cool. We're looking forward to it. So let me ask you this, Adam. What is the, um, what is the ultimate goal with this pinball machine? So uh, the ultimate goal is to raise as much money as possible for the Domino's Partners Foundation. Um, it's an internal, it's an affiliated organization uh, that helps out Domino's team members in need. So about $500 of each machine purchase price will be donated to partners. Uh, and then it will be, a, you know, it'll be, a, you'll get a receipt. So it's charitable donations. It'll be tax deductible. Um, it just, it, it'll fluctuate a little bit depending on how many games we get. Cause there's some fixed costs that, you know, you get to amortize uh, some of the costs over. So it's between five and $600 will be, will be donated. Okay. And, and has a uh, price point been set yet for yeah, the game? 52.99 plus shipping. Awesome. And then if somebody wants to buy this game, they just go to the Spooky or how does that work? So right now uh, they can just email pinball at dominoes.com and it comes to me. Eventually it'll switch over to KT at Spooky. Uh, we just haven't decided when that is going to be yet. Probably in the next month. Once production starts, uh, I think it'll switch to that. And they're going to be making these alongside of Rob Zombie too. So it's like you don't have to wait for Rob Zombie to finish and then uh, Domino's is going to kick up, right? Yeah, yeah, I think, uh, well, Charlie was saying, I think he's already in pre-production for it. So we should start cranking out, you know, 20 a month in the next couple months. Hopefully August, we'll, we'll start cranking some out. Is there, a, Adam, is there a cap on how many games uh, Spooky's willing to make of this? Or how, do, how is this determined? So we're right now, we're tentatively scheduled to close ordering on December 31st. Okay. So we'll we'll shut it down then. Um, we want to be able everyone to be able to see videos, get out and see it. Even Domino's internal people, we're going to have a couple in the building. So for the next couple of months, people who are coming in through Ann Arbor can get through and play it. And then we'll shut down ordering 
the only the only caveat I'll say is if we get a big order from somebody, a master, you know, an Australian master franchisee orders a hundred, we may have to shut it down early. Just I think Charlie doesn't want to make three hundred and fifty of these for the next eighteen months. <laughs> so yeah. get, so, get your order in now if you want one. Yeah, I mean, I, well, I'll definitely allow. But we'll alert people before we shut it down. Okay. Um, it's just it may not be December thirty first. I got I got a question. Like I, every time I mention this machine to somebody, they want to they. They think they're going to be able to like go in and try it at a Domino's, but some of your Domino's locations are pretty small, right? So, like, what kind of locations would have this machine in there if somebody wanted to try it out? So, currently, only stores with a separate party room will be allowed to have one without without a variance, um, and there are very few of those. Probably fifteen to twenty in the United States. Okay. And then there's a process where if your store is big enough, if you have forty seats. Then, then you're 50 seats, you know, a huge store on a military base. You might be able to get a variance for it, but there will not be a ton of these in the, in Domino stores. Okay. Very cool. But, awesome. but there will be one at pinball life. Oh, nice. The pinball life explosion uh, at expo. We're trying to get one in Houston for the Houston arcade show. And I'll have one in my house. So if anyone is traveling through Michigan, they can just send me an email and, uh, you can either play it at the World Resource Center or you can play it in my house. And uh, we're going to help show it off to everybody who doesn't get a chance to uh, to come to your place and play it in your basement. Yeah, we appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> I'd love awesome. to see uh, the pop-up facility get one. How fun would that be to have it at the next Pinburg? And That'd be amazing. A tournament machine. That'd be super yeah, cool. We're talking about maybe having one at VFW. So for the at the next uh, at Clay's next event, we, I might bring mine up there just so everybody can play it up there who gets, who gets into that event. I think we need to talk to the Papa guys when we're in Pittsburgh this week to uh, tell them they need one for the collection. Yeah, they should. <laughs> I don't even know. Do they have any other spooky games? They had uh, somebody had America's Most Haunted because they did a video on it at one point. Yeah, huh. they they did have it at one point, but I don't remember seeing it at the Papa facility uh, at Papa this year. Yeah. I don't know. It might have been a private collector that just brought it down there for a while. I don't know. I'll, I'll cut them a deal. Fifty one ninety nine. Nice. For that. There you go. <laughs> Steal well a deal. Worth it. Um, so. Those were my questions. Kim, do you have any any other ones? Um, I think we pretty much covered it. Um, is there anything that you wanted to talk about that that we failed to ask? Or no, I think you guys covered everything. Awesome. Thanks. Well, we appreciate you coming on and being our first uh, our test run on Skype and inviting us to be a part of uh, Domino's Pinball. It's uh, it's really exciting, and we're, we're psyched. We can't wait to come out. Yeah, that's great. We'll uh, we can talk more at Pinburg too. Yeah, Sounds for sure. Good. Sounds good. Yeah, right. One more, one question. Yep. Yeah. I have three days before Pinburg. Do I watch videos or I just play pinball? Uh, I don't know. It's there's like no way to really prepare for Pinburg. I I would say I would say this if if you have games that you absolutely hate, like if you see a game you're like, oh, I hate that game, uh, and you and you have an inkling that it's going to be at Pinburg or it's at you know the pop up facility has it. Learn how learn how to play that game. Watch videos. Learn the rules. So at least when you step up to it, you feel comfortable. I find that any time that I hate a game, I always do bad, poorly on it. So at least get comfortable on on the few games that you might be scared of or hate. Yeah, I tried to. Pl- I played WWE Limited Edition last night, so I played. I put five bucks in that game. So I need to. I need to keep on going with the games I hate. So <laughs> there you go. Do you have one on location near you? Is that where you played it? Yeah, it's right down the street at Pete's. They get all the LEs. They That's have like awesome. Tron LE, that one. They have Game of Thrones LE. So it's pretty cool to go to go down there. Yeah, it's handy to have nearby for sure. Well, cool. Yeah. Thanks again for your time, Adam. We'll see you in a couple days. Cool. Thanks, guys. We'll All talk right. to you later. Thank you. Yeah. All right. I think I, I think I did it. All right. I think we, we did it, guys. Didn't, we didn't break the internet. All right. We we're, we're back. We, my computer is like about to overload. Yeah. Know why I'm saying we're back. <laughs> Come on, Nick. <laughs> get, get your shit I, together. Uh, I am so fatigued. <laughs> I, I, uh, I don't even know how I woke up today because I mean, the weekend was, uh, it was a blast, but it was also long. We spent seven hours in the car yesterday <laughs> and kevin drove you know so he's hero. but you had the day off didn't you no well i ended up having half a day off i had to go in the morning okay yeah oh the struggle it is you had, to, you had to work two days this week and you only did one, you're only doing one and a half yeah that? well we had a uh, a stove delivered so okay well, well, that's a good excuse yeah i was late into work because my uh, basement started almost flooding so that's you know good thankfully no pinball machines were injured they're far enough away but it's all good it's a close call all right. Um that's awesome, man. I, I I'm super excited for 
for Pembroke. Uh, we'll talk about that. I have an agenda, so I'm I'm really like, let's stick to it. All right. Um, on my agenda, it says game room updates. I'm going to go first this time because I have none, other than the fact that I had some dripping water in my basement, but everything's okay. Yeah. And Bruce Nightingale fixed my machines. I mean, nobody cares about this type of stuff. <laughs> Honestly, God, oh, Knicks games are broken. Knicks games are working. Who cares? Kevin, go ahead. You have better <laughs> updates than I do. So uh, we shared this on Twitch, and it's on YouTube now, but uh, I got my Ghostbusters. Mic volume is a touch low. I turned it up already. I'm, right. I'm watching the chat room. Thank you, Tuna. <laughs> this is the live feedback, you know, that we get. Yeah. So somebody earlier said it was clipping, so I turned it down, and now Tuna's saying it's too uh, low, so I turned it up. All right, all right. Oh, we'll get there. Internet. Okay. So yeah, I got my Ghostbusters Pro from uh, Mike Pupo, Flipper Fidelity. Uh, hooked it up, and uh, it. So again, this was my first new inbox machine. So it got delivered uh, on a giant truck. It was like the one of like three boxes on this giant. Uh, semi truck pulled up to the house guy brought it off on like that like a forklift kind of like cart brought it into my garage dropped it off and then i wheeled it in here and it sat here for two days and everybody thought i was crazy they were like losing their minds that i didn't open it immediately and start playing but i wanted to uh i wanted to wait and share it with everybody so we had an unboxing party on that saturday and we opened it up set it up and this was like the the roll of the dice right was uh is it going to work out of the box, untested, uh, because Nick I Lane. Said, I would have said no. Nick Lane has had some issues. Call five for five. But we We're broke the streak. Lane. We broke the streak. No, you, we. There's no. You didn't break any streak. You are one for one. <laughs> That's you don't. True. You don't have a streak, Kevin. You don't understand. Breaking the streak <laughs> is when I buy game six if I ever get another game from Stern, and it works out of the box. Right. That's breaking the streak. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna cross my fingers. You've got to. You get get another. You know what you gotta do. You gotta buy another game. So then you can go two for two. Then you have a streak. There you go. You see I'm, how streaks work. I'm batting a thousand like uh, Mixer Tuna and Brody you and Pinball. So uh, yeah, we uh, we set it up uh, and it played great. And we put what almost sixty plays on it that night. Uh, I had to adjust two things on it. I had to change the shooter spring because it had, it comes with an orange shooter spring, which is stronger. And I asked on Pinside like, what's going on? Because I was plunging the ball and it wasn't going around cleanly all the way through the through to the spinner so uh somebody on pin side said uh put the put a green spring in because it's not as strong it will go airborne off of the the shooter lane and hit the stay fuff marshmallow man it'll be cleanly around and it's i did that i have to have a green one on hand so i swapped it and uh it looked it's plays good now uh the other thing i had to do was the uh left kicker it was playing fine and after a, a couple plays, it started like shooting the ball down the middle. So I adjusted the coils power on that, and I, I physically bent the top of it down a little bit, and that seems to have done the trick. Now it hits the right flipper, bounces over to the left. But other than that, I've been playing the hell out of it, and you will uh, hear more about it later when we do our review. So uh, Dave Sour Cream asked uh, <laughs> a question in the chat, which is, uh, is Jack going to be hooking us up with a hobbit at some point? The answer is yes. Yes. We'll get to that. Yes, so the format for tonight, which I should have been uh, more clear, uh, after Game Room updates, we're going to talk about the tournament, and we're going to try to sell shirts because that's all I do. Uh, <laughs> we're going to do a, a recap of Jersey Jack Pinball. We're going to talk, touch upon Pinburg because how could you not do that with it uh, only two days away, three days away? And uh, then we're going to review Ghostbusters. Oh, we're yeah. Gonna, we're going we're gonna to review it. The, the 1.5 code, or 1.05, I think that's what it is. Is that what it is? Yeah. Is it only 1.05? Okay. I think so. Yeah, whatever. It's the most recent code as of July 25th, 2016. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. Game room update still? Are you? Uh, well, I got a, a World Cup soccer game in too. This is, so not only did I unbox a uh, brand new pinball machine, but uh, James from Rochester hooked me up. He said, uh, I'm out of room and I want to buy a new machine. Do you want my World Cup soccer? And I wrote him back and I said, yes. So the same day I got Ghostbusters unboxed, I had a, a World Cup soccer in here too. Uh, I haven't played it much because I've been playing Ghostbusters pretty much nonstop since I opened it, but uh, it's fun to pop on a few games here and there, and it's it's a great game. And it's yeah, got it's, it's got colored uh, GI on it, so people are going to love it. Stream it. It's one of my favorite Valley Williams game. It's 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 one I would own. I don't want a lot of. I really don't have any Valley Williams games that I want for various reasons, but. World Cup Soccer is one I would definitely consider owning for sure. Papa Duke's best game? Uh, yeah. I th to me, it is. It's my favorite Papa Duke game. Yeah, I don't. I, the, the other one's fine, whatever. Uh, I don't want them, though. So I think that's telling. <laughs> and a new oven. Yes. 
all all sorts of big. Uh, my son, uh, he's been hanging out in the uh, in the Stern pinball box. He we got the new oven today. He's like, did it come in a box? And I was like, sorry, they didn't leave the box. So he's all bummed out. That there was no box. Yeah, kids and homeless people. Yeah, <laughs> that's how they roll. That's insensitive, Nick. All right. Uh good, good game room updates. I think that's. I'm it, jelly because you have game room. Every time you have like really good game room updates, like oh, I just unbox a, a new game or I'm babysitting a game. I'm in a little drought right now. You are. Well, I was like on like selling spree to sell enough games so I could get yeah. Ghostbusters. That's true. So there's been a lot of turnover in the past couple months. Yeah. Yeah, you're busy in the summertime, but yeah. you also have um, you have that garage, so it's easy to get games in and out. That's cool. That does, yeah, it's not as discouraging. Like mm, I don't have to haul them out of a basement; I can just wheel them out into my car and go. So that definitely helps. All right, very good. Uh, let's talk about let's let's talk about the tournament first. I like to give a little tournament updates. I have the tournament. And what tournament uh, would that be? This is the Buffalo Pinball Summer Open, Kevin. It is August 12th through 14th in beautiful Buffalo, New York. It's going to be held at Pocketeer Billiards. Uh, entry is only five dollars for registration. If you register before July thirty first, you get five free entries. Entries are priced normally at two dollars each or five for five. So you know, pretty good deal. Very affordable tournament, if you ask me. We have, and here's the thing for for folks who know about the the pinball tournament. We've got fifty people pre registered so far with a week of register pre registrations to go. That's very encouraging. Um. For our, our first Papa Circuit event, I'm really my goal is 100. Uh, we'll see if we can pull it off. We just had we were just interviewed last week by uh, the public, which is how do you describe the public? Cap? They're like an alternative weekly newspaper. Yeah, so you know most major cities have uh, things like that, so you guys got the vibe of that. But they were over. They did an interview. That's going to be released hopefully uh, two weeks before the actual tournament. So I do expect an influx of locals to start coming to that. Uh, it's going to be really fun. It's going to be really interesting. We're going to broadcast it. Are you going to broadcast on Friday and Saturday and Sunday? That's the plan is okay. to do some quality qualifying on Skype, Skype on Twitch. I'm losing my mind. I'm sorry. It was a long weekend. Uh, Twitch streaming uh, on Buffalo Pinball Friday night, hopefully from 8 to midnight, uh, Saturday night, 8 to midnight, and then Sunday for the finals. All right. That's fun. Yeah. We got good players coming. I mean, there's, there's a good mix. Uh, there's going to be two classics tournaments. So, Think of all the pinball points plus a main tournament. Uh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah. So we're getting close. We're only a couple of weeks away. Three weeks away? Is it three? Two? Is it three? Something. I, I we're know. losing our minds. I'm, I'm focused on Pemberg at this point. I don't have a free weekend until um, the end of August now. Yeah. So, which is not it's a complaint. So much for taking summer off. Yeah. All right. So let's, <laughs> let's sell some shirts really quickly. Let's do it. This is how we pay the bills, so to speak. Uh, we got some Brody even pinball shirts for sale. You go to buffalopinball.com slash merch. It says Brody Even Pinball. On the front, it's distressed. Looks super cool. All the cool kids are wearing it. Uh, and some of the non-cool kids, they bought them too. But what can you do? Um, you can be cool, though, if you get that. That's the, that's the gist of it. That's how powerful this shirt is. Uh, it will make you cool. On the <laughs> Truth in marketing. Uh, truth in advertising. So on the back of it, it has the uh, Buffalo Pinball logo. Uh, these are on American Apparel uh, shirts that they're printed on, so good quality. They feel good. We've been getting a lot of compliments from people who have purchased them, saying that they like this quality better than the last one we did last year. So they are thirty dollars. That includes shipping in the U.S. If you're outside the U.S., uh, just email us and we'll take a look at pricing out what it would be to ship it over to you. Uh, if you are quick on the trigger, you're listening to this, and you can order one before. Uh, Tuesday at midnight. Um, <laughs> You're gonna have you know like what? five hours after this is posted. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll just bring down all the shirts. Yeah, I'm gonna bring I'm the gonna, shirts. People are gonna want them. Remind me. I'm yeah. gonna try to remember. I'm gonna bring down all the shirts because we can sell them at Pinburg, yep. and then that way we don't pay shipping, so it'll be twenty five bucks. That's yep. a great deal. Yeah. So just bring cash and talk to Nick. All right, we had to do that. You know, we gotta, we gotta keep the lights on here. Thanks for hanging in there with us. Okay. Uh, Jersey Jack Pinball, Kevin, take it oh, away. God, it was so much fun. So yeah, we get we're invited down to the Jersey Jack factory, and we invited ourselves down to the Jersey Jack factory. Well, you know, we asked. We're like, yeah. we'd like to stream the Hobbit, and Jack says, "Yes, come and stream the Hobbit." We said, we'd like your pinball machines. Yes, we want to partner up with your awesome company and hype these pinball machines. How does that sound? Get hyped, and he said, "Yes, yeah, let's do it." So that's what we did. We ran down there. We uh, so Friday night we took off. We uh, Stayed over at the, the Lane household in beautiful Binghamton, New York. 
Uh, and then from there, the following morning, we, we drove straight on to New Jersey where we set up in like a half hour because we were planning on giving ourselves about an hour to set up. But, Jersey traffic, man. But we hit Jersey traffic and it was like panic time. So we do what we normally do when we're setting up a stream. We have like a half hour of straight stress and panic. I'm used I'm almost I'm almost used to it. Yeah. The the panic and stress, but it never fails. Like if we didn't um if we didn't have that, I would be, I wouldn't know what to do. Um uh, but yeah, the, is the internet gonna work? Isn't it gonna work? Uh is all the gear gonna get set up right? You know, is the lighting gonna be good? Uh, but we pulled it off. We had one little hiccup there at the beginning. The internet wasn't working. It wasn't working. Um, so Nick's like, it's dropping frames. And I was like, I can't fix it. So we got like five minutes into like doing an interview. Martha was interviewing, uh, Jack. And then we're like, uh, we gotta do this again. And, That's okay. And stop and go. It worked. Thankfully, the, story. the second time around it, it did the trick. So if you guys haven't seen it, uh, yeah, or haven't heard about it. We played the Hobbit for a couple hours. We did a usual bro show where we had uh, four bros. We were uh, joined by uh, Mike, a.k.a. Mixer Tuna. He drove up, and uh, we battled Jack. And then we had a special guest as well, Steve Bowden. He was the bonus bro. Fun with Bonus. You guys might know him. Okay. Ranked number six in the world. Uh, he blew the game up. I uh, would highly recommend watching it because he... I don't want to spoil spoilers, but... Some people got into the fire, which is uh, one of the wizard modes of the game. Oh, so yeah. you'll get to see a lot of the machine, and you'll get to see the machine played by one of the best players out there. And that was a brand new addition to the game because we were playing the as of yet unreleased 1.30 code. Yeah. Uh, so we were really excited and lucky to get a, a, to be able to show everybody a sneak preview of that. Um, the game is beautiful. The rules are getting awesome. Like the uh, the the way you can add balls into your mode so it turns you can lock balls and then when you start a mode it'll release them and make your mode a multi-ball like i've never seen that right so before. this is game this is a game that is you know introducing new things to pinball uh new ideas new rules new concepts which is it's fun it's exciting to see it uh i really enjoyed the game i'm really enjoying it to the point where i'm sort of thinking now okay what game do i have to sell how soon can i get the game when can i afford it that that kind of talk is going on right now because i, I generally do like this game i gotta t- I turn that uh that shout out for Mubot, but he's shouting out the the, the uh, stream from the past uh we do have a, a question in the chat room from uh sour cream uh when jack started hinting at the company needing new designers and engineers, did you for a second think about taking an apprenticeship yes honestly i don't i don't think i can design pinball machines no I, i'm not a designer i'm a marketing salesperson so I would, yeah. I would love to. That, yeah, I would sell. I would market and sell pinball machines. Yeah, if he's hiring, with some company let's wants to. Uh, yeah, bring us on. There we go. Kevin, Kevin, and I will do that. I know my we'll limitations. Sell. Um. Yeah. So uh, Jack, Jack was an awesome host. Uh, that was my first time getting to meet him. I've seen him do a seminar before, uh, but he's very gracious. He spent that Saturday afternoon with us. He had some family stuff going on, uh, but he took the time out to share his beautiful game with everybody. Um, funny. He was answering questions in our chat. And I got to say, I, I really appreciate the folks who tune into our channel. If you watch Twitch, it's just a stream of nonsense a lot of times in, in <laughs> chat rooms. But our audience is really engaged. They're really inquisitive. They ask some good questions, which uh, Jack addressed. I'm trying to think of some of the things that he mentioned. Um, people asked about Lawler's game. And he's hoping by the end of the year for that to come out. Um, what, do you remember any of the other questions that were asked during the chat that he answered? Well, what I, what it stands out the most, I can't remember anything specifically, but he, people would ask questions in the chat and he'd just be like, email me. So people oh, yeah. would, people would e- and he'd give out his email address right on the screen and people would email him and like instantly he's like over on his phone responding and, and well, it wasn't questions. just about it. It wasn't just about a question per se, but it was like, how can I get this code that you're just yep. playing right now? He's like, have them email me. Yep. I mean, that, I mean, and Jack was responding very quickly, which Talk about awesome. That's very cool because he had just gotten that code from Keith like the night before so we can stream it and show something new to everybody. Yep. Um, so he really cares. He does an awesome factory tour and it really gives you an appreciation for um, what they're doing over there. Just the complexity of the game and, and how much is actually in a game. Uh, you know, these, these games start at $8,000, right, for the standard, but the value is there. I mean, it is. I, I was I was sold on that. Not only just playing the game and enjoying it, but actually seeing 
the things that are in the game and what goes into it and how um, the parts are such quality. Uh, so it was, it was cool, man. It was, it was a great experience. Uh, that was recorded. Yes. So we did that. On, what was it, Kev? On Periscope. Okay. And so basically after the, the Twitch stream was over, we threw a link up in the chat and people could pull it up in their, their web browsers or on their phone and, and walk, around the, uh, walk around the factory with us. The video quality, because it was a mobile live stream, wasn't that great. So if you watch it on YouTube, it is going to be a little grainy. But he, he says a lot of cool stuff and he gives yeah. you very interesting uh, hints and like explains, basically walked us through how to build a whole hobbit pinball machine uh, so you can go on to our, our youtube youtube.com slash buffalo pinball and uh see that and you can also see the archive of our our live stream bro to, bro show yeah it was awesome i mean it was awesome that he gave this live tour where you had people tuning in live um being able to answer ask questions to him i mean that was such a, a cool moment we're going back down there for uh the jersey jack pinball open house on september 17th uh, we're gonna Kevin and I are gonna run the tournament down there. Yep, and uh, we're probably gonna stream mm-hmm. uh, the tournament, so you have that to look forward to. And uh, Jack said that he, we get to take a game back with us, so uh, he's gonna loan us a game, and I'm guessing it's gonna be the Hobbit, and we'll be uh, streaming it quite a bit. Yep, you'll get to see lots and lots of Hobbit, and learn all about it. Uh, I, you know, I played it Saturday a bunch, but I still don't totally know what's going on. There's there's like what 32 modes, something like that, in the game. Yeah, it's it's a Keith Johnson game. There's so there's a, if you played, uh, you know, Lord of the Rings or uh, the uh, the Simpsons Pinball Party. Those are you know notoriously deep games that people really love the rule sets on. So that same same programmer has uh, been working on the Hobbit too. Right, and it fits the it fits the theme. You know, it took three movies. You know, for the yeah. Hobbit, so <laughs> it's got to be a longer playing game. It's not a blazing fast. You know, the ball's going to drain or it's flying around or speed, but it, it fits the theme perfectly. And, and uh, it's normally not my style game, longer games, but I really enjoy it. And I, I do like the fact that it's an open play field and it has unique stuff going on in it. So I can't wait to play more of it. Yep. That's, and that's the impression that I got walking away. He did kick his machine, Wildcat. They, uh, <laughs> he, only the owner is allowed to do that at the factory. Oh, the hat. Let me grab a hat. Yeah. So, yeah, you definitely want to watch, you want to watch when Jack kicks the machine. So that's cool. Kevin's getting a hat. This is exciting. Oh, there we go. Make pinball great again. Signed by Jersey Jack. We give a few of those away during the stream. Cool. All right. That was the Jersey Jack recap. That was. Nailed it. And then, well, we also went to uh, Silver Ball. Do we want to talk about that? Oh, my God. I didn't even have that written down. Yeah. Go take it away. Yeah. So, when we, 104 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> uh, that's about how hot it was at the Jersey Jack factory, I think. Um, but, yeah, after the, uh, after the, the tour, um, actually, Jack had suggested that we go to Silver Ball Museum and stream. So I had emailed them and they said, no chance, because it's just ridiculously busy during the summer down there. So I said, okay, that's fine. We'll, we're good. And it, it worked out because after the stream at, at Jack's, we were like, okay, we streamed. It's, it, it's time to just relax a little bit. And uh, so we went down to uh, Silver Ball Museum and, and it's in uh, Pelham, New Hampshire. No, no, no. I'm thinking of uh, Pinball Wizard. Uh, it's, on the, it's on the Jersey Shore. I can't remember the town off the top of my head right now but yeah it's like right down by the ocean you go down and you can get tacos next door which we did and we played a whole bunch of pinball so it's like 15 bucks you you get in you can play as much as you want for all day you can come and go as much as you want tons of ems tons of modern games a bunch of 90s williams game uh good selection of games and they have both jersey jack games they have uh wizard of oz and the hobbit there and uh, what was your uh, what was your top game you played there? You think? What, what do you think was your favorite? Um, I don't know, man. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't have a favorite. I was yeah. just sort of like I was a little glazed over by the time I got there. I would just go up and like play as many games as possible. Yeah. But I didn't. I don't think I played any new. Oh, you know, I take that back. The one game that I'd never played before was uh, um, what's that Bally's pool game? Pool sharks. Pool sharks. Yeah. I played that and it was like, okay, it's not like I liked it or anything. Yeah. But that's like something different that I haven't played before. Yeah. So I went down. They had like a row of five wood rail games. I don't think I've ever actually played a working wood rail. So it's like, I'm. And when are you ever going to see one again in an arcade? So I'm going to sit there and uh, I'm going to sit there and play all the wood rails. And it was fun, man. Is they had that that one that we actually looked at when we were at uh, at the uh, Museum of Play in Rochester. It's got like a boxing ring in the middle. There's a lot going on in that game for an EM. It's like these little boxers fighting each other and stuff. It's it's pretty neat yeah. stuff. So it's cool. Awesome. Both, 
Bubble hockey was sweet, says Mixer Tuner. Yeah, you whip my butt in bubble hockey, but I wrecked him in Pong. So, Oh, I know what I like. There was this like ninja game. That's oh, like ninja, a ninja gun. shooting. Ninja gun. Do you play it? Yeah, I played it. That was super cool. Yeah, it, was, it didn't seem to like register all the time when you fire the gun. Though. No, but, but you know. I appreciate the concept. I was shooting ninjas. Yeah. It was like some game I mean, from like the <laughs> 60s or yeah. something like that. Mechanical ninjas running around and they're yeah. like neon glowing. And it was great. Who doesn't appreciate that? Yeah. Um, all so, right. Yeah, if you're in the Jersey Shore area, go check out uh, Silver Ball. All right, let's move along. We're, we're going to, at a decent clip right now. We okay. are. Uh, Pinberg. What do you want to say about Pinberg, Kevin? Pinberg's happening this week. Pinberg's happening this week. You know, I don't have too much to say about Pinberg. I think we're going to, maybe we'll get together next week and talk about Pinberg. Yeah. Because that's when the, the real stuff is. But look, guys, if you don't know about Pinberg, it's the best pinball tournament in the, in the world. And that's not like some kind of exaggerated statement. It is. It's uh, 700 people coming there for uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And uh, not Sunday, right? Saturday is the final day. Yeah. yeah. This, the replay effects is open Sunday, but there's no pin yeah. Sunday. Yeah. And you got some best players in the world. You've got $100,000 in prize money, um, 400 some games, I think, if I'm saying that right. There's, there's just so much. But that's like the tip of the iceberg because this is encompassed in replay FX, which is a huge uh, video game, pinball, extravaganza. Gaming. They have like tabletop gaming and console gaming. And- They're going to have a Kong off. So uh, Billy Mitchell's probably going to be there again. Oh, man. Can't wait. Uh, and I'm going to wreck Taylor on the wrecking ball. So watch out for that. Get your cameras ready because there's going to be some wrecking ball action. And all I will say is it's worth going down there, uh, even if you're not in the tournament and you have an inkling like, oh, I like video games, oh, I like pinball or whatever. Check it out. It's totally worth your time uh, there. And uh, I don't know, there's cosplay. That's another thing. They have like 200 board games, I think, available too. It's just crazy. It's mind-boggling. They showed on, uh, I think it was on Instagram, they have like, I have a dumpster full of uh, power strips that they're going to use to power everything. Oh my this god, weekend. it's insane! And they're moving all the games over from the the um, Papa headquarters over to the convention center in Pittsburgh. And if you went last year, it's actually going to be twice the size it was last year. So if you went, you saw off to like the left hand side, there was that's where Replay FX was, and there was like this whole other half that was empty. Now it's going to take up the whole thing. And they're going to have a big stage for like the Pinberg, probably a bank and finals. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. even like one of the best things of last year was watching the the final rounds of Pinberg. And I'm just looking forward to it. It sounds like they're going to make even more of a spectacle of it, which is great. Yeah. They're getting better every, every year, which is cool. Yeah. Um, I know we're going to the pirates game and this is solely incidental on Wednesday. So yeah. I bet a lot of people are doing that. So, you know, look out for the, the bros. Um, Here's, here's an incidental. So what I did to prep for Pinberg, this is my Pinberg prep. I went out and bought sneakers. Yeah, you did. This is super important. If there's, I, Adam asked a question of how to prepare for Pinberg. Adam, if you're still listening, watching, uh, get yourself a good pair of sneakers because my God, sir, your, my, uh, my feet felt broken for like a week <laughs> after Pinberg last year. It was horrific. Uh, you're on that like hard floor for like 12 hours a day. And um, I was just starting to sit on the floor at some point because it, it was just excruciating. It's better this year. They've got like a ridiculous amount of chairs. Um, they're renting mats. You can bring fatigue mats, but get yourself a good pair of sneakers. I bought some Adidas like cloud form or cloud something. It's like, <laughs> I don't know. I did my research. And I asked the salesperson. They're like, yeah, these, this is what you want if you're going to be standing around all day. And I'll tell you right now, when I was down at Jersey Jack Pinball, I saw that Steve Bowden had them on so you know it's legit you know that man is not messing around so See, dave, good footwear. dave's saying what i said i said you got to break your shoes in he bought them I like did. two days ago and he's gonna be wearing them for like well, 12 hours a day at Pinburg. i i wore them i wore them in the jersey jack stream and uh listen spoiler alert watch the watch the showdown where me and steve play against each other okay there was a one-on-one battle with steve bowden nick lane i had those shoes on I'm, that's all i'm saying just watch that clip it's magnificent he, he's crediting the shoes so yeah all right, so, fair enough. All right. Uh, so what for people who haven't, maybe it, it, there's got to be people out there that this is going to be the first Pinberg they're playing in. What should they expect? As, as a the first Pinberg, yeah, that you're playing. So what, what 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 tips would you give to somebody? This is your first Pinberg. Listen, what to expect? Listen, if it's your first Pinberg, especially if you're new to competing, um, and maybe if you're not new, but this is your your first big tournament, um, have fun, have fun, have fun with it. That's the most important thing going into this because 
there's a lot of time and money spent on this. And if you're miserable, if you're throwing a fit, then you, you've lost right out of the gate. I think when I went to my first one, I was new to pinball. And my goal was just not to come in last. If you come in last, there's no shame in that. But I'm just saying. <laughs> Somebody's got to do it. My attitude was just like, you know, everything I did was just, you know, I set the bar at a reasonable expectation. You're going to be playing games that you've never played before. Um, in that case, when they're older games, take them, when you walk up to a game, take a moment, read the play field. You, do, you don't have to rush into the game. You don't want to spend five minutes reading it, but take 30 seconds and figure out some basics. Uh, watch what the other players are doing and what they're shooting for. So pay attention when other players are playing and try to learn from them because no one knows all these games there. And if you're new to pinball, you're new to Pinburg, you're going to be playing games from the uh, you know, 60s, the 70s, 80s, all, all the way to today. So you need to adapt and uh, you need to pay attention. And, you, and just having some knowledge or taking a moment to figure out how to start multiball or figuring out that on this older style game that the spinner, um, you know, once lit is worth a thousand a spin and just hitting that spinner all day, that's going to make a difference. Um, you're going to want to, what I learned early on is that it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. You're going to want to make sure you obviously you get enough rest. I mean, that goes without saying, but I would, I would manage your kind of your food intake, you know, make sure you're, you're always well fed, right? You don't want to be starving. I find that I play poorly when I'm hungry. So make sure you eat enough. Eat and drink and sit down as often as you can. You know, I, I mean, caffeine's a blessing, but don't over-caffeinate. You know, you got to really balance your state of mind. Like Kevin said, sit down in between rounds. Go chill. Walk, you know, get out of that room. If you have time, go back to your hotel. If you're staying at the convention, the hotel that's connected to the convention center, and you have an hour, go take a 15-minute power nap, you yeah, know? It definitely, especially by day two, you're going to be, about mid-afternoon, you're going to be dragging. I remember I, I went back and took a nap. Mixer Tuna just had a great suggestion, which is watch other people's tilts. So let's say you're the second player and the first player's up. Watch how much he or she is nudging the game because you want to know what you can get away with. That's the benefit of not going first. When you're not going first, you can watch the other players and you say, okay, is the tilt loose? Can I really shake the heck out of this game? So paying attention to what other people are doing is key and just keeping that focus up. Yeah, don't be afraid to drop catch. That's another good uh, tip from Dave. Um, I would suggest if you have games around you on location or in private collections that you can try like of different eras so if you got somebody with some ems somebody with some early solid states it doesn't have to be the exact games you're going to be playing in Pittsburgh, but just get more used to how they play because if you, all you've been doing is pl playing sterns then that's going to be uh you're going to be really thrown off when it comes to like playing an em or or an early solid state because they do play differently this is a good question kev i really like this because um managing yourself during a tournament is super important, especially at Pinburg, because it's unlike uh, any tournament most people have played in before. Yeah. And, you know, like you said, enjoy it, because anybody I talk to that's played in Pinburg says this is their favorite tournament. And there's a good reason for that, because not only do you get to play, you know, 400 machines with 700 players, but you're playing a, a new bank of games every round. So you play four, four different games every, every round, and you're playing with four different people. So you're meeting people from all over the world, you have this shared connection with pinball. You're all into this. Uh, there's going to be some jerks. There's a couple jerks. But it's very, I mean, it's very few and far in between, though. Yeah, it's but, overwhelmingly good people. Right. But mostly they're, it's people who are like super competitive and they're like losing their minds over the games. It's right. not, they're not like mean to you. You're guaranteed to see me have, uh, I won't call it an outburst, but it'll give a good uh, F bomb and uh, get a little frustrated. But, you know, it's between me and the game at that point. But uh, yeah, talk to people, socialize, enjoy the fact. I think a lot of people love this style and this tournament because it is a social event. It is a social experience where you're in all these different groups throughout these few days where you get to meet a lot of different people. Yep. And, uh, you know, stay tuned. Day two, probably about 2 or 3 p.m. You'll probably see Jay Fairbrother shoving a machine into another machine out of frustration. Pinball Joe says don't eat pizza and other, and, and I'm guessing, shit that makes you sleepy. So That's a good idea. Exactly. Be, be aware of what you're eating and what you're putting into your body. You know, it's, it's, it's things like that, man. I mean, you know, pinball's not like running a marathon. It's not like running around or you don't be physically fit per se but it does pay off to take care of yourself and and be managing yourself don't go out and get plastered and party the night before and then expect to do well i mean even if you get by one day it's going to catch up to you because yeah. it's a multi-day tournament so 
Yeah. Uh, don't get discouraged if you do poorly or you get off to a bad start. It's a long tournament. You can certainly improve and get better as time goes on. Uh, so don't give up on things like that. And I, honest to God, because there's like 700 people in this, every single ball really counts. Every yes. little thing, every pop bumper. You never know. Because I, I always, after a tournament, I would look back and be like, oh my God, in this one game, if I did this, I would have moved up like 20 spots. It's insane how small things really accumulate to make a big difference. Yep. I heard, I listened to the, uh, the wide world of pinball with Jess Sharp and, uh, uh, our buddy Steve Bowden and Nate Shivers. Uh, and I remember, um, Josh made the point that the, all the points in your first round matter just as much as the points in your last round. Totally. So out of the gate, be going for as many points as you can. Inevitably the Pinberg is the kind of tournament where like one point will make the difference between you qualifying or not qualifying. So everybody has that story of, off, I would have just made this one shot. I would have made it into the playoffs, or if I would have done this mm-hmm. or that. So try to make those shots. There's good tips in the uh, chat. So Tuna says, take vitamin C. Okay, wear a hazmat suit. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, a little bottle. As Life Force has said, like a little bottle of hand sanitizer. Which I I forgot about that. You're gonna want to have some hand sanitizer. There's you know people get sweaty. You mm-hmm. know they're 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 stressed out a little bit. They're nervous. So you know take care of yourself when you're there. Drink. Here's what I do. I drink a ton of water. Yep. I always have a water bottle when I'm playing pinball. I run to the bathroom like 30 times. I'm, like, it's a little obnoxious, but like I'm always just staying hydrated and kind of just finding out where I am mentally. If you're uh, if you're rooming up with other people to save a few bucks on the hotel room, don't forget your earplugs, especially if you're rooming up with uh, yeah. you know Captain Snorri. Well, you know what? I mean, earplugs are another good thing. I, you know, it doesn't really get that loud in there, cons- all things considered, but Earplugs are not a bad idea. You can experiment with that, bring that with you, so you can kind of cut out some of the distractions. Other people, even myself included, at point certain points in time, will bring headphones, so you can just listen to some of your favorite music and kind of just tune out the rest of the distractions and the world that's going around you. Um, you know, don't be afraid to try things like that and see if it works for you. If you're in a slump, that's a great thing to do because just do a little switch. If you're in a slump, put earplugs in or put headphones on and just try to break that. Yeah, like I I tried the headphones thing. It doesn't really work for me. I thought it was at first. Like I I put them in, and then I had a great game, and I'm like, yes, I'm wearing earplugs for the rest of them. every time I play pinball. And then you know after that it fell off. So it uh it was something like I found that I need to hear the audio callouts, or I, I like to hear the audio feedback from the game. Uh, that helps me play. So it may work for you. It might not, but it, you'll never know until you give it a shot. All right, good question, Kev. So uh, I'm good on that. I'm good I on think, the Pinberg. That's Pinberg. And if you see us, say hi. We'll, uh, we'll you know, if we're not yeah. dead from playing in Pinberg, we'll play a few games, bro. Listen, guys, do Jay Fairbrother a favor um, and just pretend like you recognize him. <laughs> Find out who he is. Just say how great he is. It will, he, he loves that. He needs it. Just he ask him. affirmation. He was mad that nobody like, recognized him last year. Ask him if he is, uh, ask him if he's Adam Sandler or if he's not. Whoa. Dead flip yelling in the chat room. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> His caps lock must be broken. Because he gets it too into the song, it ends up tilting due to not hearing the warning. Yeah, see? That's, that's a possibility. Yep. Yeah, Pinberg hype. T.O. Pinhead. So Pinhead's going to the uh, the ball game with us on Wednesday, too. It's oh, going to be great. Sweet. All right, you want to get down to business and uh, do a Ghostbusters we'll, review? We'll, let's review some Ghostbusters. Here's here's the, a couple caveats. Um, I, I, I sort of had this initial mentality that, well, let's wait to review some of these Stern games because they're not done. Well, that's kind of BS. Stern shipped them. You can buy them. Right. They're done. They're putting out a product for consumption. Why hold off on a review? You don't hold off on a review for when you get a car. You don't say, I ah, give the car a year or a video, video game. game. Yeah. Even any, though, especially nowadays when they update video games, you, you review what's there yeah, when it comes out. Any product. So let's, let's review the product that's out there from now on. And, you know, maybe that will make a difference uh, because, hey, you can buy it. Yeah, now's the time when buy. everybody's looking to buy it and they want to know if it's good or not. And maybe they haven't played it yet, so let's uh, let's get into it. Okay. So Ghostbusters, released earlier this year by Stern. Uh, it's taken kind of a little bit longer for them to uh, to get them out than normally. You know, usually Stern announces a game and then they start cranking them out within a month or so. Uh, but it took me a couple months to get my Pro. This is going to be mostly a review of the Pro because I haven't played the LE or the Premium. You haven't either, right, Nick? I want to, you know... Give me one second. Okay. Hit pause. Ask the okay, real question. This is a great question. Do you have any tips for battling nerves or stage fright during a big tournament? Um, so a couple responses. One, you can try the headphones or earplugs. You can just try altering kind of your environment. I think that 
if you have nerves, embrace them. Like, don't try to fight that feeling because if you're trying, if you, if you get up there and you have nerves, then your mind's going to be like, oh my God, I have nerves. And you're going to be focused on that. You want to focus on the game. So feel the nerves, feel that you're jittery and just embrace that. You can focus on your breathing. That's what I do sometimes. I'll just like, I'll count my breaths, you know, I was like one, two. And then that way I just kind of forget about what's going on and I'm just playing pinball and everything disappears because the last thing I want to do is to get up in my head, which is a, a frightening place to begin with <laughs> and just get distracted or think I'm hungry or think people are watching me or think I need to do this or I'm going to drop points. Like that's all BS. The only thing that's important is where's that ball going and how can I keep it in place? So just if you got to bring it back to yourself, just focus on your breathing, count your breaths, your nerves will subside without you actively fighting them and uh, things will get better. But as Tuna said, it gets better over time and uh, sometimes you just got to play a few tournaments and uh, you get a little bit used to it. Yeah, I agree with the yeah, pinball Joe kind of said the same thing. Uh, if you, even if you're nervous and it's messing with your gameplay, just say to yourself, okay, this is helping me get past it. The more I do this, the more comfortable comfortable I'm going to become with this. And then eventually it's going to go away and I'm just going to be into the game and not thinking about, oh my God, I'm playing in a tournament. I sort of love it though. Like it makes me feel alive. Like yeah. I don't get nerves at work, you know, or like <laughs> just sitting around. Like I'm like, this is kind of cool. Like it's bringing me really into the moment of pinball. Yeah. Um. So that's why I say embrace and don't fight it. But maybe it's easier said than done. One thing for me when I'm playing in a tournament, like some people like to analyze the standings and see okay, I need to get X number of points to get up to the next level. Or if I need this on this, if I get this score on this game, then that's going to bump me up and it's going to knock this person down. I don't, I don't care about all that. I just want, I know I want to have the best game I can on the game that I'm playing at that moment. So that's what I yeah. try to do. Let me tell you, this is, this is really, see, we're getting deep in. This is a really good questions and the benefit of, of doing this live. Um, do not, do not, do not look at the standings. <laughs> that is so that's such a big mistake. I remember a tournament that we had within the last year. Um, it was at Bruce's, Bruce Nightingale's house. And it was in the format. It was like in a, in a Pinball style format, I think, right? Or match play format. And yeah. Everybody, after they played a game, they run to the standings and they obsess about where they're at, how many more hours are left of the tournament, what they need to do. I didn't look at it once. I just took every game one at a time. And guess who was in first place at the end of the day? It was me through qualifying. Don't focus on that. Don't focus where I'm at and where you're doing bad. Just play it. Just play one ball at a time. Just figure out what group you're in next. Yep. But do not worry about and think about where you're at or how you're doing. Because yep. even if you're doing well, you're like, oh my God, I'm playing better than I should or normally do. And guess what's going to happen? You're going to start playing poorly. Yep. And uh, Tuna makes a good point. Expect they have two house balls per game because they're going to happen. To that end, it's like, you know, you might not have two house balls per game, but just because you stepped up to a game on game three and you're you're way behind it can always be the last ball you can always come back you can always have a great game pinball joe says you know I, i'm like i need 60 million to win this game and i just focus on achieving that goal and the other players don't really matter i would say if i needed 60 million to win a game tell yourself you need 100 million to win the game you yeah. know you I, i've done it so many times oh i just need to make this shot oh i just need 5 million and guess what's going to happen you're either just going to get closer or just get that so over mentally trick yourself and try to overshoot their goal that way it will be easy to get to 60 million rather than a, a turning that into a mountain. Yep. All right. All right. I think that's good. Back to Ghostbusters. Well, We're going to close the, close the books on it. <laughs> Sorry. You, you kind of got me alive because I love like psychology. Yeah, and, and it's, a, it's a great that. topic. And with Pimber coming up, everybody's going to be thinking about this. Kind we, of can, stuff. we can explore that, like tournament psychology and stuff. At some oh, yeah. Point for, our, you know, for where we're at, at least in our level. <laughs> yeah. So Ghostbusters, three models, Pro, Premium, and LE, as, as Stern is ten, known to do. Uh, so far, they've shipped the pros and LEs, no premiums. Uh, and they haven't shipped all of the LEs yet. And uh, they they will be coming back to the pros. But you can see here, if you're watching the video, on the left is the pro, in the middle is the premium, on the right is the uh, Slimer LE. Uh, the main differences between the three, if you heard our uh, our podcast where we uh, announced the launch of this, uh, there's a couple main features that are different between the two. Uh, because... LE and premium have the same features and then pro has a different set of features. So on the, the premium and LE, you get Magnus slings, you get the ecto goggles, which are like a little uh, 3d hologram on the play field over one of the shots, kind of like think a mini pinball 2000. If you've played revenge from Mars or uh, star Wars episode one. And uh, the other thing is the ramp is different. The ramp on the LE premium goes underneath the play field to lock balls. And it's a physical lock rather than a virtual lock. Uh, but this is going to be, we're going to mostly focus on the pro because I'm, 
played the uh, premium or the LA. Yeah, we're going to have to do almost a review for the premium because it's one of those games that, and, and premium LA because it's one of those games that there's some significant differences. Yeah, and it's going to affect the gameplay, especially the Magnus Lings. Um, so I've had the Pro. I've played, I probably played a good 100 games on it at least at this point. Um, you've got the rundown of the, uh, of the, the review. So we're going to start off with art. Yes. Man. Talk about, talk about the art, Kevin. I love the art. Who doesn't love the art? Who the hell? See, I'm, has anybody said they don't like the art? I mean, sure, there's that one guy or gal, but oh, really. God. Look at this. So art by Zombie Yeti. That's why people bought, people bought the game because they heard Ghostbusters and they saw the art, and that was all that took to sell that thing. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, easily the best art on a pinball machine since uh, Metallica. Uh, it's, it's great. Awesome, awesome all-hand-drawn art. And uh, Zombie Yeti was really a good match for this game because he likes to draw, you know, weird like zombies and creatures and things like that. And you can see that and all this d- detail on the play field and, and on the cabinet. And it was just such a good fit. And he's, they even designed um, play field, uh, the side rails that go on the inside of the, the pin blades. You're not seeing it in these photos, but uh, Zombie Eddie did pin blades. I'm, I'm going to eventually get those for mine because uh, they go with the machine so well. But it's great. I love the art. Um, it integrates really well. Even the cabinets are great. They, there's sl- subtle differences between uh, between the um, even the pro and the premium kind of look similar, but you can see like on the head of the premium, you got uh, the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man, and on the side of the the pro, you got just the firehouse with with some some stuff exploding out of the side, and there's there's ghosts popping out of the sides. It's, it's a beautiful game. Anything else to add, art wise? No, I mean it's got the uh, of modern day machines. You know, I would say the machines made it in you know, since Williams closed up shop, uh, it has got to be perhaps the best art. I mean, it's up there with, with Metallica. It's up there with The Hobbit. Um, it's, it's, it's excellent. Like I said, people bought this game because they saw the art, and I can't blame them to an extent. Yeah, it's beautiful. So A plus on the art. So sound? Sound? Um, so they announced this game, and it's like it starts running. The Ghostbusters theme starts running through your head, right? It would have been like so easy to just loop that song over and over, but and the song is in there, but like you you pointed out the one day that it doesn't really sing this song. It plays like a loop of the the back of like the the musical track a lot, right? But you don't hear like the lyrics. They didn't just like take the song and slap it in there. Uh, there are bits and pieces of it. Like if you get a high score, it'll say "Busted makes me feel good" and start singing it out a little bit. Um, but they also do a great job of like every time you start a mode, it brings in a new song. And it might not be exactly the music from the movie, but it kind of evokes that feeling of the movie. It's got um, like dance party tracks on it. It's, yeah. It's good. Yeah. It's, I'm always trying to hear it because there's so many sound effects in the background, but I, it, yeah, it's good. And there's like a punk sound and song when you get the, the uh, was it the PKE Frenzy or the, oh, the Hurry Up? It reminds me of the um, song on Riot Mode from Walking Dead, which I like a lot. So yeah. Yeah, that's great. Reminiscent. There's, yeah, the dance party mode is kind of during multi ball, right? So you get to start the multi-ball. If you start multi-ball with a mode, it'll play the mode music. But if you just start multi-ball by itself, it has its own custom music. But um, yeah, it's, it's a mix of like new songs and like old-timey sounding songs. And it's just like, it, it evokes that feeling of, of the Adams Family for me where it's got this great sound and, and music package that really draws you in. I love the sound. I think the sound is, is one of the, the best sound packages of any of the Sterns that I've played. Uh, they did an excellent job on it. I I can't think of any criticism for it, really. So we mostly talked about music. What about the call-outs? Um, so they hired uh, Ernie Hudson. Yeah. Right. So uh, and he, and he Z- calls you Tex Zetamore, right? Yeah. Uh, and he did custom callouts, which is an awesome, nice touch. Good job. I wish there was maybe more callouts from the movie. You know, like more background from the movie. Yeah. There's only a couple of them. I, 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 there's more than a couple of them, obviously, but now that I'm thinking about it, it might, have, might there could have been a little more, maybe. You tend to hear more as you get deeper into the game. Okay. Um, but I have a feeling that's something that's going to come in future code updates. That would be my guess. But right. the ones that are there, they did a great job of integrating them. We got one, or who brought the dog, those yeah. sorts of things. Yeah. You hear them a lot, but they right. they they isolated the clips really well, and they fit really well in the machine. I think that's a nitpick. I don't. I don't have a problem. I think the sound's outstanding. Yeah, and I uh, sound is such an important thing for me in a pinball game. Yeah, I, I I love it. I haven't found anything really that has grated on me or irritated me. There's no like, uh, 
controversy as far as like, oh, they got a weird announcer to do the call outs. No, you know, they got Ernie Hudson to do it. It sounds great. If you play Congo, he did call outs in Congo too. So uh, you kind of know what to expect. He's got a great voice for a pinball. Yeah, he knows it. It's not his first rodeo. <laughs> That's right. Uh, toys. I'm going to talk about the toys in that. Toys. In the, in the pro. Pro toys. So, okay. Uh, on the right, you've got the, uh, what the hell is this called? The, uh, uh, <laughs> storage facility. Yeah. Yes. I knew it would come to me eventually. Uh, but that's just like a little saucer that yeah, you can hit your, uh, hit your ball into it'll, if you hit it up the ramp and lock as little to lock it in. There. Um, let me go to the play field here. So this is, these are the standard flippers on the, uh, on the, on the pro no Magnus slings here. Um, the Scolari brothers has got the two drop targets that pop up in the middle of the play field. Drop targets will never be a toy. In my book. <laughs> I mean, very rare circumstances will they? Yeah. These are very uniquely positioned though. So yeah. Um, they're kind of jerks, but they're there. They're a feature. Uh, one of the main toys, uh, let's see. I think I got a better shot. That's like it. calling a spinner a toy. Yeah. Uh, you can, I didn't get a really good shot of the, uh, well, you can see it on the over, uh, overhead shot. So on the far left, there's like a, a, a Kept through a four ball captive ball area, and you hit that, and that'll lock it around to uh, to lock your balls for storage facility and also uh, award other things. The main toy on the game is a slimer. It kind of comes down on the pro. He just kind of bobs up and down. He comes uh, the shot that goes into the pop bumper is just to the right of the left ramp. Uh, he he'll if you hit the ghost target enough times, he'll come down. You hit him three times, and that puts you in your mode. He also like slimes the play field, so. Certain inserts will turn green, and after you hit, after you clear all of them, it starts off with one or two, and then on subsequent hits, it takes more and more to uh, to clear them all. But once you clear them all, it lights super jackpot at the left ramp, and you can get a super jackpot. Um, it's got a Stay Puff Marshmallow Man in the back. He doesn't do anything; he just kind of hangs out there. Measle Mods is working on a mod to make him walk, which looks pretty cool. Um, as far as like toys, I, there's another captive ball area on the right. That starts uh, symmetrical book stacking and things like that. A, a different, it'll, it'll pop the uh, the Scolari brothers out. That's how you make them come up. Uh, but really, that's about it on the pro as far as toys, unless I'm missing something. Yeah, no, it's a typical pro. It's got the one main toy, and that's it. It does have a spinner. Yeah, it's not a it's not a toy, but it, it, it it's a pro with a spinner. I mean, this seems like a, when I first saw this, I didn't realize it was the pro. Because it's got all the the plastic uh like city, it's got that molded cityscape, it's got um what's his face? Stay puffed. I mean he's not a toy they interact with, but he's in there. I mean, it's a really good pro. There's I don't I don't feel like you're gypped out of stuff on this pro model. Like it's it's definitely an argument can be made that the pro's a great machine to get. Whereas, you know, you look at AC D C and there's a night and day difference between the pro and the premium. Yeah, there, there's there's definitely cool things on the premium, and I can't wait to play it. But as a pro and just playing this, it, it's a really good pro. It's packed. It, stepping up to it, it looks great. Um, the only thing that looks kind of cheap is the uh, the library on the left, right above the uh, the slingshot on the left. On the pro, it's just a, a flat plastic. On the premium LE, it's like a 3D molded plastic. It looks really cool, but I'm sure the mod makers are working on some of the... Uh, some replacements for that. We don't have a shot, uh, Sour Cream Dave, of the Yeti pin blade. Sorry, bro. And uh, Zentron in chat says Pinball Life sells new springs for the targets to make them fall easier. I actually have them. I haven't installed them yet. I was hoping over time, like I had heard that people say that, you know, if, if you play it a while and the springs get some action, that they start falling easier on their That's own. That's good. So I'm going to give that a try for, for a while. They still do brick once in a while, so maybe I'll pop them in there and see what the difference is. But uh, so far, so far, so good. All right, DMD and lighting. Um, it's got a gr- pretty great light show. I mean, it's intense. It still has a, a DMD, which is the downside. It doesn't have. It has. Right. They haven't moved to the LCD screen. Right. Like every it's only, other. It's only 2016, Kevin. Come every, on. Every single other, even even spooky, is like a, a startup uh, mom and pop pinball shop is it's, putting LCDs. That's in. BS. I'm sorry. There's no excuse for that. I do not care. Yeah. When all these other places are showing that, look, we can do it. Yeah. They need to just step it up and do it. Um, but. You know, the animations that are on the DMD are good. I think um, some of the typography is kind of plain, like the storage facility multiball, and it just like kind of puts the text like like somebody typed it in, and it's like, there you go. That's what you get. Mm-hmm. They didn't put any like graphical flair into it at all. Some of the fonts are like, they kind of look comic booky fonts and like like comic sans and crap like that. So I think there's some improvements that could be made on the, on the DMD, but there's some good animations. Like uh, I really like, especially in a track mode when it shows 
the Ghostbusters logo and the guys underneath it and they blast it with their their proton packs. I think that's really cool. So uh do you think somebody's working on color dmp oh for Ghostbusters? hell yeah yeah they're selling tons of these so oh, they're gonna yeah. do like but you know what they're probably not gonna do it anytime like they might be working on it but you're not gonna see it anytime soon because they want to make sure that um you know pretty much the code is done for the most part so they don't keep on going back i right. think i mean i think that's the rationale that's why that you don't see a lot of color dmds for the more recent sterns right yeah i uh i would be shocked if they didn't come out with a color dmd for this game it's it's calling for it there's p- tons of owners there's t- a big potential market so uh yes i would say it's on eventually um dmd and lighting we didn't talk about lighting much you can talk about lighting uh, i'll talk well i mean if you want to interject or i i agree with, with kevin's opinion on the dmd uh, it's good it could be better i mean there's some particular modes i like the ballroom one i think it's really cool yeah, where they're neat. shooting slimer and they're destroying everything else in that like it's a really nice touch i think sometimes it might be it's inconsistent like it's really good and then it's just blah or forgettable yeah i agree with that but um yeah it's it's good it's good it's not mind-blowing but it's good hmm. um lighting lighting's really good for the pro you've got the color changing led inserts um when you do something cool like start multi-ball you know things darken they brighten they really kind of signal that you've done something special which is key one thing just like with game of thrones it's way too bright if you're playing in a dark room i don't know what the hell's going on because you thought they would learn it from uh, uh game, game of, of thrones, thrones yeah. but they haven't but most time i'm playing the game it's with uh, the lights on so it's not affecting me negatively yeah i think i will end up putting some uh frosted bulbs in the gi you cannot replace the insert lights on the new stern spike games anymore they're all on PCBs like LCDs on printed circuit boards underneath, so you can't replace those. But you can replace the uh, the GI. So I think we're going to do some frosted on there and tone it down a little bit. Uh, but if you're playing on location, chances are it's what came out of the box and it's going to be pretty bright, especially during multi ball. Yeah, the multi ball start is awesome though. It's like the the choreography and the light show yeah. on that is it's really one good. of the best in a long time. Really good, good music after it kicks in. Like you, this is like this is an ex- you did awesome. This is an exciting moment. Enjoy. And yes. like, it's really cool. And you really earn it on this game too. <laughs> so it better pay off. Yeah, totally. All right. Let's go to gameplay. Gameplay. This is my, this is my uh, oh this man. when the, the love fest stops a little bit for me. Yeah. This game is an ass kicker. So I was talking to Nick earlier about this and I feel like this game is way too hard for the theme that it is. Like this is a theme that people see and they're going to run up and they're gonna be like, oh yeah, Ghostbusters. I haven't played pinball in a long time, but I love the Ghostbusters. I'm going to try this. And they're going to get wrecked in like 30 seconds and be like, I'm never playing pinball again. Yeah, it's it, stupid hard. It's and so hard. hard. Um, the the outlanes are deceptively tricky. You got four in lanes, so you figure, oh, I've got twice as much space to save my ball. No, I swear it goes out more than it would if there was just one on each side because it hits those little uh, the little uh, pins in the middle, the, the lane in the middle one skips right out or does weird stuff there's no posts with rubbers on the outline so you can't nudge it and get it back in um if you heaven forbid if you got one on location and the tilt is tight and you can't adjust it you're just gonna get destroyed on this game you have to be able to move yeah you miss a shot and the game's super fast you miss a shot and it's just pure punishment like you don't even get a redemption chance of trying to save it yeah yeah don't miss a shot on this game because as soon as you start missing shots you're done Look, I, I thought one of the biggest problems with the game was that, you know, John Trudeau, he likes to put a, his signature thing is there's a flipper gap. So the gap in between the flippers is is larger than on every other like pinball machine that yep. you can you play in a modern era. Um, that's great and all, but I think you've got to take into consideration the layout, the geometry of the game. I think on some games, it makes perfect sense. Maybe you need to make the game a little more difficult. Because the way you have it set up, it just plays too easy. On Ghostbusters, that's not the case. Ghostbusters is an ass kicker. So it adds insult to injury to have that flipper gap. And it's just, when I play the game, I feel like, are you kidding me? This was not just because it's hard this happened, but because something cheap happened. Like, I got a brick on the Sclary targets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, you know, let the game get broken in. Or you can go to Pinball Life and put different springs in. But it's like, come on, Stern. Did you not test this out? Did you not see that they're getting bricks? And when you hit a target and it bricks and you get a drain, you don't get a good feeling. Like right. You feel cheated. Not because you didn't play well or the game's hard, but the game should not have done that. Or the ball will hop over the um, 
um, what is it? The, 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 the out lane, the lane guys. It will yeah. hop over. Kevin had to put a little mod on it to prevent it. And it still doesn't prevent it. It pops over the mod still. You need to have like a wall that goes up to the glass to prevent this. Yeah. And <laughs> like there's the game, the ball will fly up on the plastic sometimes. It's just flying all over it. It reminds me, uh, this, is, this is the only analogy I have. It's not the greatest one, but it reminds me of the Avengers a little bit. Avengers from Stern that they released that. Like, didn't you test this or didn't you see that this is not playing maybe optimally? Um, I think there's a, some fundamental problems with the geometry on that game that you can't fix with code. And um, casual players are going to hate it. I think it's it's fine in your home collection because you want a game that's you're going to come back and play and maybe kick your ass a little bit, but you will get upset, like very upset. Not because the game is hard, but because the game is is cheap drain sometimes through no fault of your own and i have a fundamental problem with that in pinball yes i'm going on a rant yeah yeah yes, i got you for yeah it. yeah <laughs> yes there's luck in pinball yes there's bad breaks but on this game it happens like on every ball it's kind of ridiculous so two things one thing the scolari brothers every time i start one out i get mad it's like here's a punishment for doing something good in a game these these stupid asshole targets jump up oh my God, and get language. in your way. And I, I'm sorry, they, they are, they're bullshit. assholes. They get in your way and it's, they time out too. So you hit one and then you have to like hurry up and hit the other one. Otherwise it comes back and you have to risk breaking the shot again. Otherwise it goes down the hole. I feel like that's like a beta design play field where they just needed a little bit more adjustments to say, okay, this shouldn't happen. This is cheap. Let's Let's do this or that. But they're just like, no, let's run off it. Yep, you're done. And there's nothing you, there's really not much you can do. Yeah, you can buy different springs. Yeah, you can try to put a mod by the outlanes, but, or yeah, you can put on longer flippers, which is, look, guys, that's don't ridiculous. That. Just play it how it lies or don't, if you don't like it, don't get it. But uh, I don't know. It's, it's too bad because, <sighs> let, me, let me look at what topic I'm on. Oh, it is under gameplay. I do like that the design is is sort of original. Like it has a different feel to oh, it. Yeah. I like that. Like I like that ramp shot on the left. Mm, so satisfying, so fun to hit. So you smooth. Reminds me of the ramp on Congo. It's like extreme up and downs though. You find all these things that you like through the gameplay, but then something stupid happens on it and you're and just anger. Yeah. Anger. Kevin was getting angry. I never see Kevin get that angry. <laughs> we just played a game before the stream. He almost finished the ladder of, of the modes. And then, boom, something stupid happened. And I did Slimer three times to finish the ladder of Moe's and get into the game we, we came we saw for the first time. And Slimer's like, no, you're not hitting me three times. The game's over. Go do your stream because this is done. You're done. Yeah. I find myself on this game when I'm playing for a long time. In my head, I'm going, something is going to end this soon because I've been playing too long. Uh, yeah, it's not like, oh, I'm doing great. I finally figured in this game out. It's like, oh, it's only a matter of time until I'm dead. Yeah, you miss one shot. And like, sometimes if you miss a shot in a pinball game, like, okay, you can kind of nudge it. You can play with the outlines. It's going for the outlines. You can kind of shuffle it back in. No. Nope. nope. Bounces right over now. Even if it's going to be safely and you should have it, it will bounce out. It's just, it's, it's too unfairly brutal. Yep. And this is from somebody who likes like ass kicking games. Yep. It's so tough. if I'm saying that, <laughs> uh, all right. Woo. We better move on from that because I got to get home tonight. What's I can next? talk about that for another hour. All right. Uh, rules are next. Rules are next. So, yeah, we're still pretty early on in the game as far as this game is concerned uh, in the rules. But I think what's there is really, really good. Um, it's got three different ladders of modes. Uh, you, yeah, you play through them all in sequential order every time. So you're going to hear who brought the dog or who brought the Super dog annoying. or uh, um, we got one a lot. But um you know there's so much to do in the game already so you got what is it 11 modes and you got the main multi-ball there's really th the main multi-ball and then you can get to some other like wizard mode multi-balls but there's only one real like main multi-ball in this game um but it's got some interesting elements like collecting the ghosts you collect the ghosts that's again that's a, kind of like a throwback to congo and uh collecting the diamonds but as you collect ghosts it awards you different things and they've added into the code now, like, as you play, it'll light locks on the left ramp so you don't have to hit those dangerous um, captive balls on the left, which actually, I've, I've, after I've played for a while, I found you can hit those pretty reliably and not die. Uh, it's much, much more dangerous to hit that ghost target in the middle to get your mode started than to go for the captive ball and get your multi-ball. So um, definitely use on the plunge. Use your, plunge is critical on this game. You have to use your play field validation time 
to either cap the lock your balls for multi ball or set up a mode or you know lock your balls and then while the ball saver ball saver is active knock the uh the ghost target to get slimer to come down so you have to take all these risky shots while your ball saver is active thankfully ball saver is pretty long out of the box so it, it kind of recognizes the fact that the game is hard and it gives you gives you a chance but um it's really critical so like as, as far as code uh, other than that i'm still learning a lot of it uh i don't know all the ins and outs there's um there's like the playfield multipliers that i don't really understand all about like i know they they'll come up through the pops sometimes and you have to hit the stand-up target, but I don't really understand uh, how I would make that happen if I wanted to make it happen. Um, there's cool stuff. Like if you if you hit the captive balls during multi-ball, you can get an add a ball. Um, so there's a lot going on, and I'm still learning it, which is great. Yeah, out of the box, you know, the game feels like it's there code-wise. Um, I enjoy it. I like it. I like the uh, options for the skill shot. Very cool. It feels like there's a, a good amount of things going on. The modes are, you know, shoot this arrow, shoot that arrow. But it's still, it's interesting enough. Maybe there there could be some more variety in there. But there's a lot there. You, you're going to be pretty happy with it. My biggest complaint and what's, what's I, I mean, the first time I played it and I looked at this was the fact that it's linear in modes. And, I mean, come on, you have Adam's family from the early 90s who you don't play the same mode over and over again. It's random what you play. I don't know why they have to have this ladder system where it's always who brought the dog and you got to go on and on and this. Look, I get it. It's a story, but pinball machines don't have to stick to a story in a sequential order. Um, you know, we haven't seen stay, stay puff mode, right? No. Nope. Yet on that because you got to go through who brought the dog and then it's all these other three modes that because the game is so cheap drain wise, you're not going to get to and it's frustrating. So, you're going to be stuck into this purgatory of always who brought the dog. Granted, there's other ladders you can start off with, but you know it's the same concept that you're always going to start off with one of three modes out of the gate. Come on. It's you know 2016. We weren't doing this in the 90s. This is an easy fix. Make the modes default um, random within that ladder, or you know maybe pop bumpers change it, or I don't, I don't care. Slingshots change them something, but let's introduce some um, variety into it. Right, so you get to see the game, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, I think that's a good that's compromise. A, it's a it's an established thing in pinball. I mean, that's what we expect now. We don't yeah. expect a, li- a linear thing. Yeah, um, it's important for tournament play, though. I'd say to have an option to turn on the, the linear mode because in, in a game like uh, Dirty Harry, is I mean, but, if but they, they keep it, but they yeah, they don't do that in in uh, Adam's family. If pop up or hits, change it. So, like, if the slings change it, then you have a different mode. Yeah, I, I guess it depends on the game and how balanced the scoring is. Because in uh, Dirty Harry, the whole there's certain modes that are like super uh, lucrative. Like, so, if you, so you, with Adam's family, if you get the, the warehouse escape. You know, that's it's a game game breaking advantage if you get that over something else out randomly. Um, it's I don't think that's good for tournament play. You know, randomly handing you a mode that's going to have you. But it's not random if you can if you have some control over it by hitting a shot you know, and changing the mode. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Like if it's, if it's just purely random, that's a problem. But if you can control it by hitting a shot or hitting a switch and the switch changes the mode, then I say that's fair game. But you know, to your point, it should at least be an option. So if you want it to be linear, sure. But I think the default, the default should be, um, random or, or change through like switch hits or something. Okay. Like games from 20 years ago. Imagine that. <laughs> all right i gotta get going soon so we gotta <laughs> sh- we gotta wrap this up all right. um otherwise we'd be tired from Denver again. that's not good we don't want that uh last ability <sighs> hard to say but um the fact that i've been playing the hell out of it and i haven't even completed a ladder yet says it's gonna hang out and uh be a challenge for a long time i've uh two nights so far i've had it just over a week uh and two times already i've unknowingly gotten to midnight man it's like i've lost track of time because i've been playing this game so much and it keeps me coming back. It keeps me hitting the start button. I want to play more. I'm not like, it doesn't feel like a chore. Uh, it leaves me with that. I can play one more game. I can do better this next time. So I th- that bodes well for it hanging around for a while. Yeah, it's addicting. You know, I was coming over to Kevin tonight and I was like, I can't wait to play Ghostbusters. Mm-hmm. You know, and I got my ass kicked and I was like, I want to play again. <laughs> so that's good. I mean, that's a good sign for that game. I think they need to fix that problem with the rules because if they don't, and it's always who brought the dog and this, then. I don't like the um, kind of this Groundhog Day syndrome where it's like I'm just playing the game and it feels like the same game every time. So if they fix that, which is super easy to do, then I think that only increases the uh, lastability of the game. Yeah, I think it's not as bad on this game 
as some of them because you can you know choose to start a different ladder of modes or go it's for multi-ball true. instead so there i find myself saying all right i'm going to attack it this way this time i'm going to start with a multi-ball and then i'm going to bring in a mode and or i'm going to just go for mode so uh you know there's some variety there it's not totally linear but i see your point all right cool so can you pull up the rating system so we can, can. go through that yes let's see if i can do it without screwing it up this time all right can i do a chat room i think i can do it so here it is here's our oh rating my God, system. You did it. i did it i didn't move the thing around all right, so um, the score key is zero to two is burn it. A three to five is an expensive nightlight. Six to eight is a solid game. Nine to ten is buy it. Kevin, what do you give this game? Right now, current code, I'm going to give it an eight. Uh, I think it is great. I think it's beautiful. I think it has the potential to be an all-time classic. I think it just needs a little more polish on the code. And then uh, I would bump it up to probably a nine or a ten. But I don't think, don't think it's quite there yet. Um, I'm surprised. I thought Kevin was going to give it a nine or, or yeah. a nine, nine and a half or something crazy like that. I think there's room to grow on it. I feel like I need to adjust my ratings, but I think, um, solid, it's a solid game. I think based on that criteria, it's not a buy it. Maybe it's an 8.5, but for right now, it's a solid game. I think there's some sins in that game based on the gameplay and the cheap drains, which is just hard to get over. And every time you play that game, no matter what positive experience you're having with it, 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 it it's like a little cut, right? It's like a paper cut. Every time <laughs> you get a cheap drain that you just are like, this shouldn't be, this is a design flaw. This shouldn't happen. It's going to hurt you. But um, the game's a great experience overall, I think, in terms of just the theme integration, sound, lights, toy, um, and, it, and the addicting nature of it. So it's an eight, and then we'll see what happens when they uh, further develop the code. We'll revisit it, and we'll talk about those code updates and see if it affects our rating at all. All right. Zentron says he likes Kiss better than we rated it. We both gave it a seven point five. So. We gave seven point five for this. So uh, yeah, I mean, I, I that's fair in my ratings because I do like Ghostbusters more than Kiss. Yep, agree. I had to pick one or the other, but the art is good on Kiss, but it's better on Ghostbusters. All right, um, I'm exhausted. <laughs> this is a, a. I always think the podcasts are going to be like maybe forty five minutes or something. I was like, we don't have that much to talk about, but my God, can we blather? Well, Let's we had a guest going. on today too, so yeah. you know it was three of us blathering instead of just the two of us. It's true. So it's true. Let's give a shout out before we go to our backers. Thank you guys uh, for those of you who were around last year around October. Uh, we ran an Indiegogo campaign to get more live streaming gear, so we could do cool stuff like this and streaming more each week. So everybody on the screen, they were hanging out with us for a long time. Appreciate your support and uh, thanks for hanging out and and believing in what we do. And when you see us at Pinburg, don't be afraid to say hi. Um, I'll probably be in a good mood, but I get super intense and competitive. But um, I like meeting everybody. And uh, yeah, yeah, dude. I I can't wait. I'm like a little kid. They were Papa was streaming the setup of uh of like the games at Pinburg today. Like just silent room setting up games. I had it on. I was watching. It was like I've, it's like Christmas time. It's my favorite tournament. Hands down, nothing compares. My favorite time of the year. Uh, I can't wait. I can't wait. We'll see you guys all there. Yep. Hopefully. And uh, we'll see you at Pinburg, and then we'll see you on uh, August 20th for a live stream of Domino's Pizza live from the Domino's World Resource Center That's awesome. in uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan. We're going to have a uh, pizza-making demonstration. We're going to make some, some cinnamon sticks. Who knows what else? Uh, and <laughs> we might even play some pinball. Yeah, so sounds good. So it's going to be a good time. Thanks to Adam Gasick for being our first-ever guest. Thanks, everybody, for watching, and we'll, we'll catch you next time. Good night.